Hello and welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss the latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I am its host, Philip Champion. The Newcastle Cathedral, that was previously known as the Cathedral Church of St. Nicholas, will now host comedy evenings. The first Cathedral of Comedy show will take place in May and food and alcohol will also be sold during the evening. The cathedral is 900 years old. The building has recently been renovated and it was decided that it would be used as a concert venue. In order to attract the people's attention, every month the cathedral will, I quote, offer a fantastic lineup of comedy, a fully stocked bar and some of the best food vendors in the area. A former Anglican bishop, Dr. Gavin Ashenden, who used to be the Queen's chaplain and is now Roman Catholic, says that the decision to hold the events at the cathedral is offensive and blasphemous. What I'm complaining about is a degree of spiritual illiteracy, where the people appear to have no sense of being able to read the meaning of the building that they're in, and they can't distinguish between a bam and a cathedral. It's a selling out at best, it's a blasphemy at worst. When you walk into the cathedral, you are literally walking into a building that is shaped like a crucifix. You enter the body of Christ. It's a movement for penitence and awe and love. It is important to know that the church in Newcastle is not the only cathedral in England that is used for such purposes. Cathedrals in Leicester and Bristol also host comedy events quite regularly. A Metropolitan of the Orthodox Church of Alexandria is calling for a meeting of primates of local Orthodox churches and for establishment of a special commission. The main issue on its agenda would be the schism in world orthodoxy. According to Metropolitan Seraphim of Zimbabwe, without taking into account the text of the work of the inter-Orthodox meetings on the subject of autocephaly, there was something done that began the threat to the visible unity of the local Orthodox churches. Here the Metropolitan is talking about Patriarch Bartholomew granting autocephaly to the so-called Orthodox Church of Ukraine. He later writes that even those who support the autocephaly of the so-called Orthodox Church of Ukraine disagree with how it was accomplished. And it must be remembered that 10 local Orthodox churches continue to insist on dialogue with the participation of all churches. Thus, there should be a synexis of the primates to consider all matters with love and under guidance of the Holy Spirit. Here's the list of hierarchs proposed to be included in the special commission on this topic. Archbishop Anastasi of Tirana in Albania, Metropolitan of Pergamon John Zizoulas, Metropolitan Dimitrios of Princes Islands, Metropolitan Callistos Ware of Diocleia, representative of the Patriarch of Alexandria, Metropolitan Sergios Kikotis of the Cape of Good Hope, Metropolitan Nifon of Targoviste, and the representative of the Patriarchate of Moscow. In addition, hierarchs of other churches may also participate in the commission. Metropolitan Seraphim of Zimbabwe also says the following. The agenda of inter-Orthodox meetings should be determined by the assembly of our primates, after the final approval by the Holy Synod of each local church based on the ancient synodal ruling of the church, that the opinion of the majority must prevail. The idea is great. The only question is this. Will the Church of Constantinople agree to this? The Greek Orthodox media has started an information campaign to convince the world that the Russian Orthodox Church is preparing a plan to seize the territories of the Church of Greece and Constantinople. It all started with Metropolitan Gregory of Peristeria of the Orthodox Church of Greece, who said that for the past 30 years the Russian Orthodox Church has been plotting to invade the territory of the Greek Orthodox Church and the territory of the Patriarchate of Constantinople. He believes that the Ukrainian issue is just an excuse rather than the reason, and that all these actions have been planned in Moscow for the last three decades. However, the Metropolitan does not take into account some simple facts. Thirty years ago, the Russian Church had only just freed itself from 70 years of persecution. Think about it. In 1915, there were 47,000 priests in Russia. In 1988, there were only 6,700 priests left. Let me repeat, 47,000 in 1915 and only 6,000 in 1988. By that point, most of the churches in Russia had been demolished. What kind of an expansion into Greece could the Russian Orthodox Church think about at that time? Following the Metropolitan of the Church of Greece, the Orthodox Times outlet, which by the way is officially sponsored by the US State Department, 
also wrote an article on the issue, stating that soon there will be a Russian exarchate in Greece. Allegedly, it will consist of Greek anti-vaxxers and old calendarist schismatics. This is what they write in the Orthodox Times. The Russians will not stop in Constantinople. According to the information analyzed by competent departments in the Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the plan of the Moscow Patriarchate is to press in all areas of the Mediterranean and the Middle East. The article also states that, according to an unknown source in Constantinople, the Russians, I quote, have even created a church web channel with hourly news and expensive TV productions. The outlet also notes that both the Prime Minister of Greece, Mr. Mitsotakis, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Gendia, have already been informed by Archbishop Hieronymus and other Greek Orthodox hierarchs about the possible quote-unquote Russian invasion in Greece and the repercussions this could have for the country. Well, what can we say about this? The bigger the lie, the more it will be believed. Why do certain Greek Orthodox hierarchs and sources in Constantinople so desperately want the Russian church to look as an invader? Just think about it. For the past three years, the Russian Orthodox Church has been calling to solve the Ukrainian issue on the conciliar level. From the beginning of the Orthodox faith and the Council of Jerusalem that is described in Acts 15, the church has solved disputes at its councils. The same calls for a pan-Orthodox discussion of the current schism in the world orthodoxy, which was created by the Patriarch of Constantinople, are increasingly heard from other local Orthodox churches. So the question is simple. If Moscow is wrong and Constantinople is right, why doesn't Patriarch Bartholomew want to convene a pan-Orthodox council? Share your thoughts about it in the comments section. A community of believers of the Transfiguration Parish of the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Ivano-Frankivsk has been kicked out from their own church building. The story started a long time ago. Already in 2019, local authorities wanted to acquire the church building, but the UN Human Rights Committee obliged Ukraine to not kick out the Orthodox community. However, after a number of judicial meetings, the Supreme Court of Ukraine had decided that the church premises must be vacated. So now, the community of the Church of Transfiguration that has been renting the church building for 30 years must leave it for good. Apparently, from now on, the building will be used as a kindergarten. The Catholic Bishop of Las Vegas, George Leo Thomas, is urging Catholic politicians in his diocese to abstain from Holy Communion if they support abortions. According to the hierarch, the Catholic Church will never be silent when human life is threatened, whether in the womb or in a deathbed. Bishop Thomas believes that support for abortions contradicts the moral teachings of the Catholic Church, since all life is sacred from the moment of conception until natural death. We believe that all persons, without exception, are unique and unrepeatable gifts from God. We hold that each is fashioned in God's own image, and therefore there are to be no throwaway people, no disposable souls, and no second-class citizens. Earlier, it was Bishop Athanasius Schneider who said that the US President Joe Biden must not be permitted to receive Holy Communion since he is pro-choice. According to a Pew Research Center study, a third of US Catholics are in favor of excommunicating the president. In response, the US congressman demanded that if President Biden and other pro-abortion politicians are denied communion, then the Roman Catholic Church must lose its tax-free status. So far, there have been no changes in the situation. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on The Orthodox View.